Okay, today we are talking more about HTML, specifically about semantic HTML. And I've got the slide up, it's available for you. If you have questions as we go along, I'm trying to keep track of that. So you can post them there and I can come back to answer those. And of course, we have such a small group that feel free to just unmute as well. and We can talk about things as we hit them. But so let's dive into talk about things today. <clears throat> so yesterday when we were talking and, and demonstrating things, we added tags directly to our HTML file. And so just by opening that file in the browser, we were able to see those tags and they, the information that they represented appeared in the browser. And that's because in modern web browsers, they're able to interpret the information and they've gotten smarter than they were in the old days. But there are, when we're designing and coding for the mass population around the world, there are a lot of people that are still on older browsers that don't deal as well with HTML. And so it's important that we structure our HTML documents correctly. So let's look at our HTML file that we created yesterday, the index file, and we'll just put in a few of the codes that help make that structure correct for any browser to be able to read properly. So let me open, share my screen. Okay. I mean, we may add a lot of the tags in here. So the first tag that we have to add in any HTML file is going to be called the doc type, which is made This is a, a declarative tag that's telling us that this document type, when the browser opens it up, it knows to, that it's going to be HTML. There are other doc types that aren't used as much anymore, but you can, there's, there were tags for XHTML, XML, and things like that. For what we're talking about, you just need to know that your browser needs to see that there's an HTML doc type. And that's what that tag is for. <clears throat> it's just declaring to the browser the first thing it reads, this is how I should understand this document, what language we're dealing with, and that's HTML. The next tag that you'd need to have is the HTML tag, which is telling the browser that this, oops, up and pasted that. That's telling the browser that this is the part of the document that is read as HTML. So that is a, an enclosing tag. And you can see where we're beginning to get into the nesting idea within tag, the tag structure. All of these elements had just been, um, this first section were just tags on their own. And then we had the emphasis and strong tags, which were nested within a paragraph. And then we had the list items that were nested within an unordered list. And now we're, we're dealing again with a tag that's nesting all of the other tags within it so that we can tell the browser that this is the HTML content of our document. So within that HTML tag then, and I'm just gonna hit the tab button because it's, it's common practice to have some visual hierarchy within our HTML documents as well. There's arguments between developers about whether they should be just spaces or tabs. I've hit the tab key just to, to represent that here because it's an easy one, one thing to do. So there are a couple of other tags that within the HTML structure that we need to be aware of, and those are the head tag, And then the body tag. If you have content in here already, I'm going to be adding that there. 
Now all of this within the body tag, I'll tab one more time. So we have two primary parts of that HTML document structure, or the, which are the head and the body. The head is a place where we put what's called metadata, or it's the material that's telling us things about the document, and it's where we store information about code that's going to be run, for example, JavaScript code. All of that stuff that doesn't get rendered to the front of the browser, but it's just used within the document, within the structure. That's put in the head tag. An example of a meta information that goes within that head tag would be a title tag. And the title is, for this document, we can call it our uh, employees site. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we'll look at that rendering of that site in the browser. So you can see that in our file here, oops, I need to make that smaller. By adding the head and body, nothing in the visual display really changed. These are all tags that just are putting structure around what's the content of the file. But what you may have noticed was that this title tag added the title to the tab up here. So that's how we can tell the browser to know what to display there. I'm just gonna cut, cut that out and resave it so you can see that again. And then refresh this page. And it comes back to the title of the, of the file. So when we're dealing with our file structure, if we don't want people to really know necessarily what that file is as the label on the tab, then we can put in that title and should put in that title to make that a little bit more human friendly. So refresh that again and employee site. So I want you to take a second and go to Slido and I'm going to turn on a poll and there's just a quick question that I'm posting in that Slido, which is what content goes in the head tag. I just want to get your answers from that. Looks like we've got two responses so far. Looking for four more responses. All right, who hasn't had a chance to respond there? We've got five responses. I think we have three more students. All right, well, we'll go ahead and talk about this for a minute. So from the responses, we've got 60% 60, 60 saying site meta information, and then 40% saying navigation items. So this is a good, good thing to point out. <clears throat> we often talk about the head or the header of a website as being that top section of the site. 
And so it would make sense in a lot of ways to think about navigation going in the head. But that's something that's unique about the head tag for HTML documents is that the head will contain information that never gets displayed to the site. And that's the difference here. We, there is a header tag, <clears throat> which you can use within the content. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. But I just wanted to point that out, that there is a designated section within our HTML that would be head that has information that is not ever displayed to the browser. So it would not actually contain things like navigation items or, or a hero image or anything like that. So uh, I wanted to make that clarification for you. So uh, let's, let's look at an example. Um, if we go view page source in the browser, we can see all of the HTML document. This might be hard to read, so let me see if I can bump that up a little bit. And you can see that they've got a doc type de declared and then an HTML tag right here. And then they've got a head tag. This is a little bit hard to read because of the way the browser displays that. But they've got that head tag which contains meta information. It contains a title, which is the income share agreements. And you can see that in the tab there. And then there's more meta. And those, those meta tags are, are helping to uh, tell screen readers and things like that what's part of this and, and automated bots that are, are tracking and, and search engines, things like that, to tell them what's on this page. So those are some of those meta tags. And those are things that are never displayed to the, to the uh, actual browser window that we see. Then there's also these script tags. I don't want to overwhelm you with this, but I just want to show you some of the things that get put in this in this head tag that are not actually in um, or that are not part of what we see on the web page. So there's scripts, things that are using JavaScript, things like that. I have a quick question. Sure. Is is it similar to like a um, index or glossary in a book before? getting into all the nitty gritty stuff? It's, it's kind of like that, but it's not generally human read. So it's more about what the technology needs in order to display everything correctly and to search for search engines. So search engine information may be in there for them to be able to parse and, and understand what's on the page in addition to what's in the body. Uh, but it's not something that most people would ever interact with in any way. And so in that way, I, I don't think it's quite the same type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if that helps to clarify that. But So it's meant for the server. Right, and for the browser. The browser, the browser. The server, and, and search engines, and like that. That's using that section. Okay, cool. Okay. So then after the head closes, you can see this, it was hard for me to really find that, but after the head closes, then we start into that body tag and then we begin to see the navigation that's in the site. And I won't go much further into that because it's just so hard to read, but hopefully that conveys a little bit of that information about that. Any questions, any additional questions? Have I been able to help clarify that a little bit? Um, I just have a quick question. So yesterday we didn't specify the document was HTML and it mm -hmm. still was fine. Um, yeah. Can we go away with not using it, or is it okay? Because, it it's not going to be okay in professional circumstances where your site might be viewed by somebody on an old Windows machine that's running 
you know, an old browser like uh, um, Microsoft Internet Explorer 8 or 9 or something like that because it might misinterpret the information that you're providing. So it's always important to provide that, that doc type tag. Even though the modern browsers can parse it and generally do a pretty good job, there are instances where you would want to make sure that you're covering all your bases and to make sure that, that the structure is correct for uh, earlier browsers awesome. and those needs. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so I've actually introduced this idea of, of Chrome DevTools a little bit, and I want to show you another thing other than just being able to view the page source. <clears throat> um, we can go to any site and look at uh, information about those sites by clicking on uh, the DevTools. In Google Chrome, it's this inspect option. So what I did was I right clicked with my mouse and I came down to inspect, inspect that element. What this opens and all the modern browsers, Safari and Chrome and Firefox have similar development tools that allow you to come in and actually see how the site is structured. So when I right clicked and said view page source, it basically just gave me a spew of this information and it's hard to parse. But when you use DevTools, it's actually opening and you see different elements on the page. So for example, I, I hover over an element and I can see what element it, it is that I'm hovering over, be able to see that. So we can see the tag here, the body that's selecting everything in the whole site that's being displayed. And this is the head, and that's all that meta information that we were looking at before. It's extremely useful for development because we can see how things are being rendered in the browser, and then we can make quick tests and changes before adding them to our code. So let's, let's uh, look at another site. Let me go to ESPN.com. And I invite you to do that as well with your browser, if you have space on your computer screen. When you come to the site, you can right click and go to inspect, find something similar if you're using a different browser. I think most of them say the same thing. You can also access this by going to uh, view developer, and then developer tools, and that's the same same set of tools. So I just closed it. You can also use the option command I code or uh, key quick key, and that will get you the uh, this panel as well. So within within this. There's a lot of things we can do. We'll address being able to change elements probably as we move forward, but you can actually go in and, and edit pieces of this. So if I inspect this element specifically, I can make changes to the actual element itself, like saying display hidden. Oops. Let me do that. Display, sorry. None. So I'm toggling that on and off. And you can play with the HTML, you can play with the CSS, and it, it's good playground for being able to learn more about development as well as test out new ideas. So that's called the developer tools. Just wanted to make an introduction to you that now now because we may go back to that again a little bit later. That's how we use it. So let's look at CodePen for a minute. Oops. The CodePen window disappeared.
Let's see. I'm gonna open. I'm gonna open the one from yesterday. So just for a right click and inspect, we have a sort of dual situation, nested situation here where within within this document here, they have actually got the HTML declared and a doc, doc type declared within that iframe. And so what, what they've done is they've taken care of some of that structure within, within the code pen so that we don't have to add the doc type and the body and the head. And we can just start editing into the HTML body section itself. But I just wanted to point that out because um, if you come in here and you start coding, you wonder, well, do I need all of those other tags? And it's actually been taken care of in CodePen already. So it's something that is necessary for proper rendering in most browsers. And <clears throat> it's already taken care of in CodePen. Right, any questions up to this point? Is there a template of some sort that we can actually um, follow each section of an HTML file? So uh, I'm, I'm starting to relate this to possibly a resume template where it shows you this section is you put this kind of information and you okay. keep going down the line. So um, you can basically make a template of your own with, with uh, the header tag and, or sorry, the doc type, then head, and then body, and the closing HTML, and uh, yeah, closing the HTML tag. And that would be the basic structure that you need for any site. And then, as we get more into it, you'll see that there's a lot of other tags that we can use, but that's the basic building blocks that you need. And, and that should be sufficient for uh, basically getting you started. And then as you actually have a design, you begin to decide within that design, how that, that structure needs to be created on, on your own as you're looking at what the pieces are of that content. And so, beyond that basic structure you have a lot of different directions you can go and there there would be uh templates you can also look up i don't have any off the top of my uh, list of available tools something that you could use but if you google it there there i know are people who have created templates like that okay thanks so that's a, it's a good segue to talk a little bit about semantic HTML, which is the main topic of today. And to understand why we use semantic HTML, we have to really understand why we have it in the first place. And the reason that it came to existence was because when the internet was just first beginning, there were no real standards across all of the browsers or, or the developers who were creating websites. And so the organizations were writing their own markup for their own communication. And so they would create tags for the way they thought about the information that they were conveying through the internet. So company X might use specific tags that made logical sense to them, while company Y would be using their own unique tags, calling body, they might call it copy, or they might call it text, or they might call it body, or they might call it uh, article, something like that. And because there was no standards, then the, it became kind of a big mess uh, of hodgepodge information. As the internet expanded and that impact impacted more people across the world and the different organizations, different countries, then we needed to create some unity, unification of the tags that we were using. That unification is what we call the World Wide Web Consortium, or w, W3C. And they are the organization that 
monitors and discusses and then implements standards for the internet. The consortium was formed in 1994 and it created these international standards for the World Wide Web. And these standards are constantly being discussed and changed as new technologies develop, as new uh, use cases emerge. And they're always being discussed and created and kept up to date here on this W3C website. It's called W3.org, W3.org. So you can go to the standards and begin to talk about the mental devices. If you have a strong desire to learn about it, this is a great place to get those foundations and fundamentals of web development and the standards associated with them. If we didn't have these standards, then we'd end up having thousands of lines of markup to describe the same thing. And in fact, because browsers can render maxing, uh, matching XML tags, we can see what that might be like ourselves. So. What let's do is let's look at an example of how that would show up. So if I type in a new tag within my body element, and I call it, let's do it right after our H1, I'll call it my Lambda school tag. I've just created a tag that doesn't really mean anything, but I, Curious what will happen. Let's go to our browser again. And it's added that tag. It's added the HTML. And so because browsers can render these things, you can basically create any tag you want and still have it uh, read by the browser. But the problem is when you're communicating with other organizations or other people in these it becomes very difficult to maintain some consistency across browsers of how things are displayed if everybody had their own unique tags for everything that they were creating so when we talk about semantic html we're talking about tags that have meaning embedded in the name of the tag this meaning is not only important for our understanding of our ability to read HTML, but also for many other reasons as well. It helps search engines and browsers better understand the HTML structure, helps users with screen readers or other accessibility tools to be able to navigate through that HTML in a meaningful way. So yesterday when we talked about, we had easy to understand their meaning. So H1, we understood that H stood for header and P stood for paragraph. And so we understood that H, H1 and H2, header one and header two, uh, IMG represents image. So we know that this tag represents an image content type. So we can basically look at these tags and clearly understand what they're telling us and so because we can basically read the tags as a meaningful content, then we know that this is a semantic tag. So far, we've only really worked with these semantic tags. And so we kind of wondered to ourselves, is this, why, why do I need to make this distinction about semantic tags? Because that's all we've used so, so far. But there are unsemantic tags as well. And the most common used, tags of these are called the div tag and the span tag. <clears throat> so the div tag is uh, and span. These tags don't tell us much about the content that they are creating. It's telling us that it is a division of content and a span of content. And we don't know much more other than that. So I want, I want to know from you, what do you think are the benefits based on what I've talked about so far? What are the, the strengths and benefits of using semantic tags or having semantic tags? So 
sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, what, what are the benefits of having semantic tags in HTML? I guess um, basically just having a common language uh, worldwide to be able to communicate with anybody on your team. Okay, good. Common language. That's a, a great value of having the semantic tags. Any other thoughts? It will be like, um, it's the industry standards. Okay. So yeah, the, the industry standards, the semantic tags help um, that cohesiveness across all, all people using the browser. Good. So there, there are some non-semantic tags that are also part of that, that uh, consortium's explanation of use of the web. So the semantic nature of those tags are not necessarily uh, the only way we can have unity across them because we are using the div tags and span tags as well as part of that, that system. But uh, one, of, one of the things that we see in semantic tags is that the meaning is conveyed by just somebody reading them. And because there is that unity across the, the, um, the web with the W3C, then everybody who looks at those semantic tags knows what they mean and they're consistent across that. So yeah, awesome. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about the meaning of these semantic tags. Miguel, what about the H1 tag and H2 tag is being conveyed from those semantic tags? What is it that we're seeing and what is the relationship to each other? So basically, which one has more authority? Um, so H1 tag, obviously in this case, uh, will represent a larger text than the H2 tag. Okay, so yeah, that's the, the primary differentiation. We've got a, a hierarchy of the value of those tags in terms of the information they're trying to convey. Oftentimes that will be displayed in terms of size. Sometimes those are displayed in, in a different way to represent that hierarchy, but yeah, absolutely. The one and the two, as I look at that, I can say, okay, I know these are headers and I know that H1 is more important than the H2 in terms of what we want the user to see first, so great. All right, and we look at this div. Uh, Nora, what would you say that this div tells us if we look at the div tag? I'm sorry, I have no idea. Okay, that's kind of the, the uh, point I'm trying to make is that mm. the div tag is not really telling us anything semantically about what, what it means to the site. So why do we use div tags? So let's think about that from a pull up, a mock up. This is a website. as a uh, HTML document. This is where divs come in. So we have, we have information. What, what would you, what tag do you think you would use for these, these labels, the coldest sunset one, two, and three? Anyone have any ideas what they would use? The, the coldest sunset one, two, and three? Like that would be the div tags, individually their titles. Would you would you want to use a div tag if you're trying to think in semantic HTML? To would you use a div tag for tag yeah, that could be the text like in that? It would be for it okay. would be a title okay, because they're all the same element. <clears throat> okay, they would have the same tag. Okay, so each of them could have the same tag. We might likely use one of the H tags um, 
potentially for this. So um, I think I think it was Ivan who said uh, H two perhaps depends on where yeah. where else it fit on the table or on the place. So that could be a, a semantic tag for H2. How about the lorem ipsum's text? Where what you might you use for that? That would probably be a P tag or a or a span. Okay. Good, yeah. P tag would be a good semantic way, a paragraph tag to know that that's the kind of content we're using there. So we've got semantic tags that could help create meaning for those. But then for the image, we'd probably use an image tag, which would be helpful for uh, making that. But then we can also use div tags to help provide some continuity for each one of these elements. So if we think about it as a designer, if I came into my sketch file and I was creating this, I might group this whole thing together as a single entity within my layers say this is my card group or card card two group or something like that. And then this section within here, I might group that together as well. So we can do similar things with our div tags to try to group things together and create some structure to them without having um, the semantic HTML tags that are associated with those or not having to create names for these elements that might be inconsistent across different organizations. I can just use the div tag to create that grouping. But these divs are useful for organizing our HTML so we can present it in a certain way. That's why we often refer to the div tags as presentational HTML. So we, we can use these divs to help build that structure, then we can style those structures into appearance the way we want. So I want, I want to see or show how that looks from a coding standpoint. So we're going to use this blank about page just to, to think about that. So I'm going to do an H1 called my title, an H2 called subtitle, and then what we'll do is a div surrounding those. Okay. So we're going to go to If I take away the div, and then refresh, there's no change to the actual appearance. So this div is giving us the ability to provide structure behind the scenes that then we can use with CSS later to provide that styling. We're going to be talking more about CSS tomorrow and sort of give you a clue to that. But let's take a look at the, at the uh, layout of this page here. You can see that my browser is automatically putting in a doc type and head and body tag for me because I didn't put one in my structure, but it knows to interpret that this way because it's one of the modern browsers, but that's important for you to note for that those are necessary for it to display in the browser. So it's just automatically putting them in. And then, let's see. We have our div and then the title and subtitle within it. If I select my div, I can actually make start making changes. I 
don't know if you can see on that share. Let me choose a different color that's brighter. Blue violet. So within my browser, I can start making changes to the div itself. It's not affecting the semantic nature of these codes, but that's where we start getting into this ability to make changes using these divs to help group elements together. So that's uh, introduction to some semantic and, and non-semantic tags. We also call presentational tags. Any questions? Anything you could use some clarification right now? Okay, so I want to introduce a few more semantic tags that we can use to help give meaning to this HTML file. So we're going to go back to our index page. We have div and span tags, which can be non-semantic presentational elements, but there are also presentational semantic tags as well that we can use that help divide our page into sections and help give meaning with semantic tags without having to use this. So here are some examples of that. And I'd love for you to, to build along on the same file that we've been working with before, just to get a chance to get familiar with writing tags and getting them into position. So the first one I'm gonna write is header. Oops. So header, this is where I wanted to make sure that I had clarified this earlier because I knew this tag was coming up. We have the head tag, which is part of the HTML structure, but then we've created a semantic tag called header, which is where things like the navigation might go. We have a main tag. And the main tag would be where someone might put all of the, the main content that would be fitting in between a header and a footer. And the next tag, the semantic tag, is that footer. When we talk about the footer, we're talking about a bottom section of a page that has kind of ancillary information. It might be considered more like the index that someone was asking about earlier. It's a place where we could put uh, extra material that we think would want to do about anywhere they were in, were in a site, but it's not primary content that they're coming specifically to the site to look for. So within, within a header, there's also a semantic tag called nav. And that's where you might put your navigation elements, links to the other pages of, within, within the site. In this site, we have an about page. <clears throat> and um, so I might put an anchor tag. And this is an, another example of a uh, semantic tag is an A tag and href equals uh, let's see what we've created so far in our browser. Go back to as you can see, we have the about here as a link to take us back to that page that we were on. We put that into the nav and really the display, all we have right now is just the text that it's rendering. But within 
our HTML, we can see on the side all these tags that have meaning. The header, nav, we know as we read through it what each of these tags is meant to represent. And because of the tag itself, we have that, that meaning, semantic meaning in it. I'm going to introduce a couple of other tags as well. We have a header, we have nav within the header, we have main for primary content, and we have a footer. Within main, many times there are things like articles that you're creating, and so there's actually an article tag. So within main, I'm going to say article as another tag. And within an article, then we would probably have paragraph tags that have the content. And uh, potentially a H3 or H5 or something like that as a way to have this content. Within within a an article or within a a main section, we might have different sections as well. And so section is an available tag also. Another semantic tag. And then there's an address tag as well. So if we were parsing through as a computer, we'd be able to see oh, an address. And Google, for example, uses semantic tags like this when it's trying to pull out snippets in the search engine. When you do a Google search, there's often some suggestions in a box pulled on the side that is pulling information that might be helpful to somebody who's looking for that information. The way that they gather that is because other sites have given their content the semantic meaning that then they can know, oh, this is an address. So if you're searching for a gas station and you pull up gas station in a certain location, they can pull up that information and just feed it to you right on the browser page or right on the search results page rather than having to go into you clicking away from Google and displaying that information. So it's a good way for the search engines to surface content that's relevant to people who are searching for it by having these tags. <clears throat> okay, any questions up to that point? Okay, here's a question for you. When might you use a div tag versus a section tag? I, I would use a div tag just to separate uh, a whole chunk, uh, like to make a card or something like that. And then a section tab, uh, something inside that uh, area. Okay, so you say a section or a div you would use for creating something like a card, but a section, something within that card, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. That that could definitely be used for it. The one clarification i would say is about the section section is most likely going to be referring to content within something like an article or or uh, a main section or a main part of the site so you you may or may not want to use section within a card if it was something small because the section is, is 
think about dividing chapters if it was a long form content and you had chapter one, chapter two, then each one of those chapters might be a section because you're trying to help make a code related differentiation between those similar entities within that long form content. And you know, as we talk about this, the actual use of each of these semantic tags may vary depending on the actual site you're on, but the overall meaning of that tag should be pretty similar across different sites. Do you happen to have a visual example of um, where you would use a div tag versus uh, a section tag? I, after the break, um, we will, I don't have an example from another site, but after okay. the break, we are going to go through and code that um, visual that I showed yesterday, that employees dashboard, okay. and start working on making some HTML decisions about those pieces. So hopefully that can help answer some of that. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? If not, let's go ahead and take a break right now. It's a good middle point here. And we will regroup in five minutes to practice some of this HTML together. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, maybe like people can leave that. Okay. Um, what's the difference between a header and a nav? The header and the nav. So, yeah, the or title, like they, so maybe not nav, maybe the title, like a header and a title, kind of sound the same to me. Okay. <clears throat> so the the title tag, when we use that actual title tag, that's going to be the title of the website that would be displayed in the browser tab. Okay. When you think about the header what we're basically saying is we, we want to define a block of area within the site we'll continue and you can put whatever makes within that header and usually you'll find nav navigation items within that okay. so the nav might contain some imagery it might take contain a logo it might contain um, a colored bar or it might contain other elements that visually get displayed within that section, but the navigation itself, you you would have a separate tag for that so that when we're parsing through, we would know these, everything within the nav are the links that would go somewhere else on the website. Oh, okay. So for example, in this area, I would guess that this whole section is the is nav, it? or yeah. sorry, is the header, oh. and then just, this section here would be nav, probably. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Thank you. Sorry, okay. it's just, they sound like to me they sound all the same and like they do the same thing. But yeah. the code is not. Thank you. No problem. Looks like um, Google has done things non-semantically, so. That's interesting, but that's how I would would code the HTML is thinking about that as a, a nav section versus a header section. Okay, so let's go ahead and take five, put up the timer, and then we'll be back in five minutes. See you soon.
All right. We are back. What we're going to do for the next little while is take that image that we were working from <clears throat> or that I showed you yesterday. And we are going to just start thinking about how we would code it up in HTML. So we'll go ahead and these out of the way. You want to think, what are the pieces of this design that we would turn into HTML? So I'm, I would like to have you guys do this with me and let's talk about some of the things that we might use to create this into a, <clears throat> a file. So I'm going to create one more file here, I'm just going to call it uh, What is the first thing we need to do for this code based on what we talked about today? Anyone recall that first tag is called? Hey, can you repeat the question? Yeah, what's the first code? What's the first tag that we would put in our HTML file? Oh, the, is it the doc type? Doc type, yeah. Doc type, HTML. And then after that would be the HTML. Uh, yeah, there you go. And then from the beginning and end. I couldn't hear the last thing you said. <laughs> yeah, that uh, pro HTML at uh, the beginning and, and the end one. Okay, cool. Let's add our head. Okay, good. Head. <clears throat> and the title. Okay. We'll call this a dashboard page. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, great. What else do we need here? Somebody. Okay. <laughs> so I got bod hit <laughs> too soon. All right, the body tag. Okay. And then comes the header. Okay, great. You have a header tag. I think that would be a great semantic tag to talk about this section here at the top. Would we do navigation first? Okay, we can do it in, um, what, what do you mean by first? So you'll have your body and then navigation and then your header? That's a good question. My my feeling is that I would probably put the nav within header. Okay. That, that would be my thinking, because I would think, all right, for my nav, I want this to be my nav. And so I can style that whole nav just using that HTML tag of, of uh, sorry, header. Sorry, I didn't mean to confuse you. I would want this whole thing to be header, so then it could have my logo and my nav, and then my image for the login image, whatever that might be. Okay. So you will put the title inside of the header too? The title I have inside of head, and so that, that represents what will show up in my browser tab when it's showing up. But I will need something within the header. If I'm naming this whole section as a header, 
then I would want to have uh, maybe a section here. What um, what might this be? What tag do you want to use? Let's imagine that this is a uh, sorry. I think I'm having internet issues. So we imagine that this is just a, a text, a text link to the homepage of this site. What tag might you want to put there to represent that? H1. Okay, that might be a good, good solution. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll call that employee. And we have our nav, <clears throat> and then we have uh, maybe in. Actually, we'll leave this within the nav. <clears throat> we have. Actually, I'll come. I'll come back and talk about the lab or that. So we have nav, and we'll talk a little bit more about that picture of the upper right-hand corner when we come back to that. But let's see this other section. But this whole area, what tag would you use to do this whole area? The main. Main, that'd be a good one. Could you also use a, a diff for that? So oh, yeah, you could you could definitely use a div. So the question we ask ourselves is: Is there a semantic tag that we could use, where where we can provide that additional information, or do we need to stick to a div? And as I as I showed in um, the Google site a minute ago, they use they're using a, a ton of divs, and divs aren't bad, but we ask ourselves as coders. Can we provide additional meaning here if we use a semantic tag versus an unsemantic tag? So that's why I say a main would probably be a good, be a good tag for this section. So we have our main area of the site. So we have a header, we have a main area. This comp doesn't have a footer, but maybe that would be another one. If, if it did, we would use a footer. Then we work within, within the main area. And how might we make each one of these cards. That's when you would apply the divs or the sections, right? Okay, yep, I would say that this would be a good place to step into div as a, as a good way to separate these from each other. So I'll go ahead and create a div. And then within that div, I have different elements. So maybe I start with an image tag. And uh, does anyone remember what we call the part of the div tag that was inside of those tags from yesterday? All I know is that it goes uh, SRC after the source and then equal sign. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And then it would be and whatever then, you, URL you yeah. link to, right? So good. Yeah, those are called attributes. And we will be using attributes as we get into CSS tomorrow. So a lot of tags have a lot of different attributes you can use, but just wanted to. Uh, bring that vocabulary back to your remembrance. So we have an image source, and I'm not going to put in a source right now just because I don't have that file available right away. So within within the card, we have some additional information. Yeah, we'll go like H2 for the name, uh, P for the rest. 
And that was Tommy and Carol. Then what was it? H3, you said? And then P for the rest. Okay. This is... Uh, a six four seven. I, I'm just going to pretend numbers. Okay. So then we have elements of this card. So we can actually <clears throat> just copy and paste that structure. I have Someone a quick had question. A comment? Yeah. Go ahead. So um, exactly how you're kind of like parsing this entire, um, I guess, screenshot or image that, that you're trying to build right now. Uh, that seems to be a lot less cognitive load, you know, starting with, you know, your header tags and, and then you start breaking down what the, what the main has. Um, that's, is that very typical that you look at your image as a whole and then you just start to break it down and you can copy, I don't know how many times we have this, six times. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, that that is the, the most effective way that we um, can do that. And not having worked with a ton of developers or actually seen how they're coding things, <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's universal or not, but the places where I've worked and uh, the training that I've received, that's, that's a really good way to think about the design that you're put that's put in front of you, break it down into those smaller pieces from larger to smaller. And um, it's, it's an effective way that then when someone else comes back and looks at it, it becomes easier to think about it and, and get through it and understand what it is you're looking at. Um, okay. Did that answer the question you're asking? Yeah, definitely. So like if I were to look at the frames that I've been making or designing, I'll just start to break them down into pieces first and then mm -hmm. fill them in as needed. Yeah. Okay. If, if I'm understanding you, you're right. Yeah. Then I would say yes. Okay. Bring some of these back. Uh, Get that alignment right. Let me go ahead and hit save. And then let's look at <clears throat> this page in our browser and just see what we've got so far. So employee dashboard. All right, we have basically created the content, the HTML content for this site. And I think I'm short by three of those because we have eight of those. But before, before we go on to, I want to come back to that nav navigation area because in our design, we have three elements of text and then one of an image and all of that could be considered part of our nav. So we're going to create what's an anchor tag. And I think I showed that to you just a minute ago. The 
attribute of an anchor tag is the href. What that is referring to is the URL reference. And you see that what this, this uh, IDE is doing for me is trying to hint to me what other pages are within this site. And so it's saying all of these other pages are within your file structure. If you just click on those, then the browser will know that it's other files within this file structure that I can link to. The anchor tag is, is creating a link to whatever the URL is that you post in this href. <clears throat> so I am going to go ahead and just call this employees to match what's in the label. We could create that file later. And then I close the tag and then add the text. So for this tag, we have an attribute, which is called the href, which is the URL that references what it is I'm linking to. And the anchor tag becomes a place that you can uh, use to link out. And that's the established uh, semantic use of this tag is to, to create links. So I'm going to just copy and paste this. four times instead of a label here I'm going to create an image with the source the undefined source yet and the other elements of this would be teams reports and edit this to be teams reports. And then profile would be that fourth one. So if you, if you are following along with what I did over creating a link for the employees <clears throat> and then a link for the teams and a link for reports, and then the link for the profile, which is an image rather than text in it. Because we are on the employees page, then I'm actually going to take that out. You can see the differentiation that they've created in this design. This one is dark where the other two are light. Just trying to give an indication that as a visitor of the site, I am on the employees page and I can navigate to either of those. So, Taking out the href will allow me to keep that same styling as the other anchor tags, but because I'm on that page, it doesn't try to redirect the browser back to this page again. If someone clicks on it, it just takes away that functionality so they stay on the same page. So that's my thinking behind that. All right, and I refresh that. <clears throat> now we have the employee, the employee logo area than each of the links that are part of the nav. So if a, a bot or somebody reading the HTML looks through, they can see semantically, I know this is the navigation, so I know that each of these links are probably going to reference another page within this site, as opposed to a link that goes to some external site. So I know that this is my navigation section. That's the value of those semantic tags. Any question about some of those things? I wanna come back to the idea of semantic versus unsemantic tags and really try to understand if you are, are following the reasoning and the, 
that you understand what it means to be a semantic tag versus an unsemantic tag and why it might be valuable to use semantic tags. So if you have any questions or if anything feels confusing or you're uncertain, let's talk about it so that we can make sure that I can clear things up before we part ways today. I have a question. Okay. So um, how do you use a semantic tag to denote um, like the following elements so they can belong into main content of the page? Like, um, would that be the body? Can you repeat the question? Maybe help me understand more what you're asking. Um, so uh, on one part of the assignment, it does say that um, you have to uh, um, kind of denote the following elements um, so they can belong to the main content of the page. Would you be doing that with the body um, semantic tag? Or uh, which semantic tag would you uh, use in order to um, kind of group the elements um, into a main content of the page? So the body is going to be the required tag of of every html page so anything that's going to be displayed is going to be part of the body tag okay. and so when when we talk about getting more into the main content there is an actual semantic tag called main oh. and that can be the one that you would use to designate this is this is the main content this is what we want you to be pay, pay attention this is why this page exists whereas something like a header tag might be un universal across a lot of different pages the main content of any given page is likely to be unique to that page. And same uh, with the footer would be universal across a lot of different pages. The header would be universal across a lot of different pages, but that main uh, semantic tag would help you say, this is, <clears throat> the, this is what this particular page is about. And that's, that's how I would use main. Does that answer the question you're asking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Got it. Yep. Answers it perfectly. Thank you. Awesome. You bet. What other questions can I help clarify? I introduced this listing on the W3 schools the other day. I thought maybe we'd look through and see the A tag is uh, defines a hyperlink. That's one that we're talking about as being is, uh, having semantic meaning. Address is one that we're talking about. And that supports information for the author owner of a document. There's an article tag that defines an article and a side from the page content. So sometimes we see call outs on a page where it's not part of the primary content of the page, but it's sort of ancillary adding uh, maybe a visual flair or helping draw people into an article by pulling out a pull uh, piece of it so that's another semantic tag you could use in that in that context audio is sound content you know another semantic tag so it's good to sort of read through these and become familiar to a little bit what are those tags that I could use to help have that semantic meaning in my code if uh, without having to use divs and rely on those as my main thing. So if I'm going through, I don't have to use a paragraph tag for everything that has text in it. There might be something like a caption where, where it's meant to be the caption for a table specifically. Then a citation or cite tag for the uh, title of a work. <clears throat> So there's lots of different semantic tags that are available for your use. And I just wanted to, to introduce that again as a way that you can reference those. If you're thinking about creating content, you could scan through and say, does this match anything? If I have somebody's name or their phone number, is there something that might be helpful for me to be able to do that? In some cases, there's not. And then that's when you can use just a paragraph tag or just even go div is more for display, things like the, the card display or grouping things together in a visual 
display of information. I had a question about nesting all of the tags. Um, so like, for example, the name Tommy Carol, uh, we have it as H2, um, and then we want to make it bold. Like if we want to just uh, combine several tags within um, one line, how would you go about that? several tags in one line yeah so um if we wanted to make tommy carroll's name bold right now mm -hmm. um how would we go about that so there there are two ways that you could could do that one is if if you use html or css which we'll talk about more tomorrow you can add an attribute to that tag with CSS that would make the font weight heavier, which would make it more bold. If if it's a simple matter of just bolding it, you can use the strong tag. And it's okay to have that nested within the H2. So if you wanted the H2 to still be the tag surrounding that for the purposes of, of helping convey that uh, information the semantically, but then you can add the bolding if that was for some reason uh, important to bold just that H2 as opposed to all H2s. <clears throat> you could then add this strong tag as a way to do that. So if I hit save. Would you recommend doing this part in uh, CSS? In almost all cases, any st stylistic changes you make, whether that's bolding, font size, font weight, um, color, all of that should be done with CSS. You can do it other ways, and there's some cases where that might be beneficial, but almost always I'll try to do all of that within the CSS. Okay. Because CSS is a layer of abstraction that, that allows you to, to change multiple things at the same time, and it helps make the HTML cleaner to read and parse. So there's, there's a lot of benefits to doing that. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. I think this this automatic display of the H2 mm -hmm. is bolded already, so the strong doesn't make any difference okay. to that in this case. All right, so just as an illustration of, of how these anchor tags work, I'm just going to add an ex a, a real, uh, which, uh, right. If I click on employees, it takes me to google.com. <clears throat> the way that all attributes work, and we'll see more of this as we get into CSS, we have the same structure and syntax of whatever the attribute is, followed by an equal sign, and then quotation marks, and within those quotation marks, whatever the quality of that attribute is. It's, it happens in, uh, you're able to make uh, changes to shape and size that way. If you could, you can add CSS declarations this way or attributes. And so it's good to just have that format in your mind. Whatever the attribute is, then the equal sign and the quotation marks. So, 
if I was to add a link to the Lambda School website within this navigation, talk me through how I would do that. At the the A command, okay, and uh, the href, and then inside of the quotation marks, uh, you'll add the Lambda School uh, complete website. And then close the A. Okay. Oh, and yeah, if I you wanted to actually see it, title it, yeah. Andrew and Lambda School. Okay, so go back to this page, refresh it, and we've added this link. We can see it now. If I click it, it takes me to your file is not found, which means that this is an external reference. So that's a good thing to remember when creating anchor tags is that you can leave off the HTML or the HTTP tag or the this precursor to the URL if you're within your file structure <clears throat> but if you're leaving the server and the file structure within which your website leaves you would need to add that that http reference the forward slashes yes uh -huh, good observation <laughs> So the S means a secure site, and most sites that have um, a secure site will redirect from an HTTP, HTTP but that, that was a good catch because it's good to have the S in there. S represents a secure website, so that is what helps you know that the messages being sent back and forth from the server is encrypted, so you wouldn't ever want to put credit card information or password information to any site that doesn't have that S on it. But most sites that use the, the S, reputable sites will redirect you to their secure server if if you uh, use the, just the HTTP. So cool. <coughs> All right, what is not making sense about any of this or what do you feel uncomfortable with? Is there anything else that I can demonstrate again that will help you understand the HTML and semantic HTML? So I think from too many tabs. Let's talk about the assignment for today then. Mm. Someone about to ask a question. I was if if later you could collapse um, each of these uh, tags so that I can see like overall the structure of what we just created. Okay. Um, and then I can kind of reference that later as a template, basically. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, let's look at today's assignment then I can do that. Okay, today's project, part one is in that same unit four folder that you'd created yesterday, created a file called structure.html and inside create the HTML 
document structure, the typical one that we went over, and we can talk about that again. Inside of your body tag, add an H1 tag with your name in it. And you went to the open structure.html in VS Code and take a screenshot of your screen. We should be able to see the file structure and the file itself and add your screenshot to a Google Doc. So you'd be able to take that screenshot so we would see all of that in that screenshot. The next thing to do is to open up this code pen and we want to make those updates that will bring those HTML uh, semantic tags into this structure. So we just follow those instructions and complete that assignment. <clears throat> you will um, add, add the link to your completed code pen to your document. And then once you've completed the code pen and all that, you can submit it. For stretch goals, you can pick one of your daily UI designs and turn the content into HTML. Try to be as semantic as possible. Think about those semantic tags first before trying to group things into divs as well. And then are there tags that we haven't talked about that are in that list that you might use that make it more semantic? Uh, that would be a great task just to go through and and look at UIs. If you've got time after doing all of this assignment to do a couple of those, that would be really helpful for you to be able to go through that process. Then you name that doc UX Semantic HTML, your name, and then the screenshot of your VS Code editor and then the code pen in that document to submit. So that's the assignment for today. And Serena, if I understood your, your question right, you wanted to see kind of how that structure would appear. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so we start with the doc type and then the HTML tag. And then the main structure of uh, an HTML page is going to be with the HTML ta tags and then head and body open and closing tags. And from that structure, then within the body, you have your semantic tags that could be used, the header or main and footer. And those, those are basically the three main tags that I would have as the secondary tier under body. And under head, <clears throat> All that you would really need to have right now is just the title, but you would want to definitely include title as part of that uh, head stack of code. Is that what you were looking for? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. And within the header, you know, you, you start getting into where things become a little more nebulous and could depend on what your site is and what you're looking for and what you're trying to achieve and what the actual site will end up looking like. But within header, having a nav is probably the primary thing that you would almost always have set a header. And this is where like, the door is wide open because there's lots of different ways of displaying things, lots of different semantic codes you can use depending on the types of content that you're working with as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Christian, I have a question, something I'm personally curious about. Um, okay. On line eight, will you have your, your H1? Um, say that again. On, on line eight, where you have the H1. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what if your, your logo is a, an SVG? Mm -hmm. Is it still good practice to wrap that in an H1? Most likely not. Um, so the logo, in, and in fact, my inclination, the only reason we did H1 there is because that logo was looking like a, just a text logo as opposed to mm -hmm. an image one. 
So I might rather have an H1 to display something a little bit more uh, meaningful as well. So uh, in this case, maybe I might say this is a I even might make that a, a P and then give it give it its own styling to make it look the way it looks. But then under the main uh, part, and I would have an H1 that said employee dashboard. And that's where I would want my H1. And normally you would only have one H1 tag on a page because that's the one that the search engines are really looking for to say, what is this page about? And so that's how I would think about it. So if I had a logo that was an image or an SVG, I might just you know put the SVG code there or just uh, put an image and make that. And then there would be an alt, alt text along with the image to help convey what it is that's displaying. I, I think Christina pointed that out yesterday. Mm -hmm. Having that attribute of alt helps with screen readers and, and accessibility as well. That was probably a longer answer than what you're looking for, but did I answer the question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, so if it was like the landing page, right, and uh, my logo is a, a PNG or an SVG, then my H1 would probably be um, like the value proposition, mm -hmm. like a, a short text about what the app does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. See, that's not how image tags work. So actually I actually have to talk about that alt thing for just a second. Let's see if I can find the page we're working from. Okay, so I created that as an image. You can see that there's, since there's no source, then it's giving me this broken image icon as just a reference for that. About. But if I inspect this element, browser is actually um, giving me this information automatically because it's in inserting that broken logo. But you can see the alt text that I put in, so they'd be able to um, read that text as the text reader if they didn't have access to the source. So the uh, <clears throat> browser itself is actually putting that information as a text image, displaying it as text because of the alt text that's available. The screen readers would have access to that as well. Okay, what other questions do you have that I can answer this last little bit of the time that we have? And I don't want to, to waste your time either, so if you feel like you're ready to go and tackle the assignment for today, if you don't have any more questions, by all means jump out at this point. But I'll stay on until everybody's gone again and make sure that I'm able to answer any questions that people have about semantic HTML or HTML, anything we've covered so far over the last couple of days. So I'll just say goodbye to anyone who was ready to leave. Thanks for coming. And then I'll stay on until we're all fully had our questions answered. Thank you. Thanks.
All right. So I do have one question. Um, so when you uh, make a footer, right, a fixed footer, and um, uh, let me formulate my question again. How do you, how would you uh, length the the footer like to a certain length? Like so, there can be like some space um, in the footer, so like the text can't look very cramped up. That's a good question. So you're talking about if I'm scrolling down the page, I hit the footer. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that it's going to be a specific height and yeah. make sure that there's the space that I need. That that all is done with CSS, and uh, we will we will go into depth on that tomorrow. Because yeah. what what happens is the browser is just going to put whatever text we have, and what we what the way that the browser works is there's what we call the box model, but each piece of those elements have a margin that we can create and then padding. So the margin, can, we can create space outside of the box and then padding, we can create space on the inside of a box. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we do. We will go into that with the CSS and we just declare padding is X pixels and that will give us the space that we need or we okay, can do it with margin a lots of different ways. But. All right, so aside from that, um, that's about it. Okay. Yeah, cool. all right, perfect, thanks. All right, you bet, talk to you later. Bye. I guess that's everybody. So any, any 